all of it is it's hard I won't lie to you and I, I did struggle many a time and I don't think I've ever said this anywhere online but actually after I took mods in the second time of my second year I didn't want to do classics anymore <laughs> and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be doing the very highly requested video telling you my honest review of studying at oxford university for four years and how i found it i am going to be completely honest brutally honest in this video even if it means that i am <laughs> being a bit more vulnerable i've literally planned out exactly which topics i'm going to cover i do anticipate that this video is going to be quite long so grab your beverage of choice Mine is currently water. And we'll get into this video and start spilling some tea. So if you're new here, just a quick introduction. My name is Viola. I studied the Literae Humaniores Classics degree at Oxford, which is four years, and I studied at New College. I took a gap year before I started at Oxford and I had already got an offer, I applied for deferred entry so I had taken a year out before I started at Oxford so that is definitely something that I will talk about later. With the classics course it's very different from other classics courses in the country as far as I'm aware. It's a four year course regardless of your language background so whether you have Latin or Greek A level, doesn't matter, the course is still four years unlike at Cambridge. It's slightly weird in the sense that you don't have your first set of exams until your fifth term so that's your second term of second year so your exam timetable and schedule is very out of line with everyone else's because you have exams kind of in the middle of the year it's kind of weird and then we have our final exams which are called greats and we have those at the very end of our fourth year the course structure is slightly different and strange our first set of exams which are called mods they mainly focus on language it's very very language heavy you typically take between seven to ten papers depending on which course you are studying on the classics course I have just done a video explaining the different strands course 1a, 1b, 1c, 2a and 2b because that's also confusing so I've done that video already if you want to go and check it out and then the second half of the course you take eight papers for finals and what I really liked about the course is that it's incredibly flexible there's no compulsory paper that you have to take for finals unlike in other subjects so we had full reign to choose eight papers of our choosing out of 80. So I'm going to just quickly talk about the modules that I took for mods, which are the first set of exams. I took Latin language, Latin unseen, text and context essay paper, text and context translation paper, the Aeneid, Cicero and Catiline, philosophical logic, which is a modern philosophy paper, and then an optional paper which they no longer do, which is just a lot of different translations and meter, but they don't do that anymore. And then for finals, I took Roman History 5, which is the Republic, Roman History 6, which is the beginning of the Empire, Cicero, Politics and Thought, two archaeology papers, Roman Art and Roman Archaeology, Cities and Settlement, three philosophy papers, Latin philosophy, Knowledge and Scepticism in Hellenistic Philosophy, a modern philosophy paper called Knowledge and Reality, and then I took an optional special thesis, which is a ninth option, you only take eight, but it can replace your lowest exam mark in a non-text-based paper. So out of the four papers that I did, which didn't have the language element, it could replace the lowest mark in that, and it did. That's what I took as a kind of background before I get into the full review of how I found the course and the whole university experience. Teaching. The way the course is taught at Oxford, it's focused on small group teaching, so you have tutorials, it's, it's a tutorial system where you will have two students and one tutor or even one-on-one -on -one sessions, an hour to an hour and a half per week. Having a tutorial with a professor, you'll have prepared some work for it, either written an essay every week or prepared some kind of presentation to give, and you'll have that every week for each of the papers that you are studying. First year classics course, is very heavily focused on language, as I said before. So since I was a course 2A student, I had to do intensive Latin classes for the first two terms of first year. We had daily 9am Latin classes every single day for the first two terms and let me tell you, that was definitely a struggle. I don't know if that's like the best idea for the classics department to, to decide because Obviously when you're in your first year, it was hard just adjusting in general to university and for lots of people it was their first time away from home. I, I really struggled with the language classes. It was tough because a lot of the time I remember I was very tired first year, especially in the first term when you're kind of going out at least once a week. 
I remember the Friday morning language classes after a night out in Bridge the night before were very difficult. You don't really focus, you don't really concentrate. It was very intense. Having those daily language classes, we did have homework that needed to be in every week. It was either at least one, if not two pieces of homework that had to be done per week handed in. We would have weekly grammar tests and vocab tests. So in terms of the language side of things, it was very intense because they want to get you up to scratch. They want to get you in two terms up to A level standard. So I did find that intense. And then on top of that, I would say that you might have extra classes, but it entirely depends on your own college. So I think something to emphasize is that, especially with classics, it might be the same for other courses, but in my experience, the amount of extra classes you have is entirely dependent on your college because my college, we had an in-house language tutor. So we would have our own language classes as well every week, but not every college does that. And I remember some people in my Latin class, they wouldn't have anything else other than the intensive Latin. And I used to feel really jealous because on top of doing the Latin classes every day, I would have a one-to-one -one tutorial in college with a my language tutor. I was preparing, I think, Cicero's in Catalina 1, completely by myself. So that was once every week as well. And that was in my first term. So I had the language classes and I had that language tutorial in college on top of having lectures. And then in my second term, when the classicists had to study the Aeneid paper, because it's Latin. In the first term in my college, the rest of the classicists studied the Iliad, but because it was Greek, I wasn't taking that paper for our first set of exams. So I didn't have to write a weekly tutorial essay for the Iliad. Which in hindsight, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm grateful for it because I kind of wish I did have more work on because I didn't really have that much work on in the first term. I got really lazy. Like I just thought that it was quite chill. It wasn't too work intensive at that stage in the very first term because I did just have the Latin classes. And you'd think that I'd fit up that time in my first term, just really, really focusing on Latin and getting really, really good up to a really good standard. But if I'm completely honest with you, I just like bummed about. I honestly don't, I don't even know when, what I did with my time. When I look back, I just think, what on earth did I do? Because I barely had anything on. Yes, I had daily Latin classes, had a couple of lectures and then this one language tutorial to prepare for, but I had a lot of extra time that I should have devoted to Latin, but I didn't. Like, I think I honestly just socialized. I went out to lots of events. I went clubbing a lot. I joined lots of societies and I didn't really put work as a priority. And I'm not saying that you need to put work as a priority, but it's definitely, I wish I had worked a bit harder in my first term and really, really focused on the grammar and the Latin because I, I definitely didn't. And yeah, I keep saying this, but looking back, I just, I don't know what I did with my time. And then in the second term, things ramped up a little bit because we started studying for the Aeneid and that is a paper that I was taking in Latin. So I started having then a weekly essay that I had to prepare for. So I was still having the daily la Latin language classes for an hour every day. I had a weekly tutorial essay that I had to write about for the Aeneid. I then had a language class in college with all the other classicists in my year. We were reading part of the Aeneid and we were doing language classes in college for an hour and a half every week. And then I remember we would also have evening seminars every week or every other week in the second term. So that was about an hour to two hours per week going over some other topics that we had to study. That term, things did ramp up a bit. Because I had taken a year out, because I had taken a gap year, and because I had mainly studied maths and science A-levels, I was really worried and I really struggled with writing my first essay and I kind of wish that in the first term I had been forced to write essays even if I wasn't taking the Iliad paper as an exam that I either studied the Iliad because it would be nice to maybe study the Iliad or just to have been forced to have written essays on a different topic because by the time it got to the second term and I was writing my first essay the other classicists in my year who were all boys so I just called them the boys the boys had already written eight tutorial essays and they were over that kind of first hurdle of writing their first essay and I was there kind of really worried and really stressed and I wish I had been forced to write something earlier because I, I just didn't like it. I do wish I had had something in the first term. I remember I really struggled with the essays and I don't even want to look back at the essays now because I can tell you they are probably really really bad. That was the second term and then the third term work did kind of ramp up again. The daily Latin language classes stopped. We had one Latin language refresher class once per week for an hour and we had still had tests and things like that and then we had lectures going on and then we had to choose our philosophy paper for our first set of exams so I chose the modern philosophy paper which was philosophical logic and in some sense that was less work than doing a, a philosophy paper that required writing an essay every week because you just had a problem sheet to do and certain problems and it did take up less time than reading and writing for an essay. On top of doing that we then also started having fortnightly seminars on archaeology for the text and context paper and in college I was still having a weekly language tutorial 
one-on-one. -on -one. I think I was, I don't really remember. We were still having language classes in college and then we also ended up having another language class for some of the text and context Latin poetry. I think we were reading Propertius in one of our language classes with one of our other tutors. The summer term was quite busy as well because we had those but overall I'd say first year was really not too work intensive. The language element was very heavily emphasised and I wish I'd done more work on it and I, I didn't really take it that seriously. I think for me, if I'm being completely honest, because I never, I never thought that I would get into Oxford, I honestly never thought that I would. I always thought, if you've watched my other videos you'll know, I always thought when I was applying to university in year 12, that I would apply for physical natural sciences at Cambridge, I would apply to Gonville and Keys College, I was studying maths, further maths, physics, chemistry and classical civilization at AS and then I dropped physics. And took the rest to A-level and I honestly thought that I would be applying for that at, at Cambridge and I made a very last minute decision having gone to Unique summer school literally the August before I, I applied to Oxford. I applied, sent in my application, thought that I've done barely any reading around the subject, I've only just made this decision, I probably won't get in and after my interview experience I definitely didn't think I got in. So when I did get in I think to me it was just kind of okay, so I'm in, I'm at Oxford and that, that's enough for me. I don't need to be the top. I don't need to be the best of the best. I don't need to be the best in my class. I think for me, it was just genuinely enough to just have got into Oxford, to just be there and to be a student and to experience all of that and to be doing my degree there. It was kind of like, okay, I'm in, but I'm, I know I'm gonna be at the bottom. And I kept saying to myself and I had in my brain, there's no way I can catch up to the language standard of people who have been studying Latin since they were 11 years old and I would be 19 going in. There's no way I can catch up to seven years of them having studied a language in just two terms. When I was younger, I was sent to Chinese Saturday school and any other Asians out there can relate to Chinese Saturday school. Like I absolutely hated it. It was two hours every Saturday from the ages of seven to 16 and I really hated it. And because my mum can't speak Chinese and because most of the people at Chinese school, their parents spoke Chinese. So I was obviously going to be, I was going to be the bottom of the class. And as a student who always performed really well academically at school, it was the one thing that I was already used to. They always say and they always warn you that if you get to Oxford or you get to a really top university, you might have previously been a big shark in a little pond, but now you'll be a little shark in a big pond. You're so used to always being the top, you're so used to being the best, that when you get to somewhere else where you're full of everyone else who's really, really brilliant, then you might not be at the top of your game anymore. And sometimes it's hard for other people to grasp that. Whereas I think because I had always gone to Chinese school and I was always at the bottom of the class until GCSEs, I was kind of used to that. I was used to being the rubbish one. I was used to not being the good one. I had just had this impression and I, ha I don't know why. Looking back, I don't know why, but I just kind of, I think I had in my brain that I'm going to Oxford, but I'm gonna be the bottom. I'm not gonna be at the top and I wasn't aiming to be at the top. I will be at the bottom and it's fine. I've been at the bottom before. It's not gonna be like a huge shock to me. It's not gonna upset me. I'll be at the bottom, but I'll be at Oxford. And that's kind of all that mattered to me. But I think that's kind of partly why I might not have put as much effort into learning Latin and actually spending more, more time spending more hours on academic work every week than I probably should have done. Some people have asked me do I have any regrets and I wouldn't say I had any regrets per se, but I would say I kind of do wish I'd worked a bit harder in my first year when the workload was a bit less especially in the first term where I didn't have to write a weekly essay. So I really don't know what I did with my time. And then second year, in the first term of second year, we took our special subject paper. So that again was one essay per week. I did Cicero and Catiline. And then we were still having weekly language classes in our college. And I don't think we had any with the faculty. Can't really remember. Then we just had a lot of lectures. I was having weekly tutorials with the other person in my college, Odysseus, who was learning Latin from scratch as well. And we had a two-on-one -on -one tutorial with our language tutor every week in all of first year and the first term of second year, half of second term of second year. We'd both be Latin language, so we'd both be sent Latin unseens and we'd have to translate it and send it back to him. And we'd work through some text and it was just mainly Latin work. Quite a full-on term, but also all the classicists kind of knew that we should start beginning to prepare for our exams and start revising if we can, or at least get together all of the materials that we would need. And also in that term, I think we were doing fortnightly seminars for the rest of the archaeology stuff for the text and context paper. We were doing essays for that as well. So it was kind of full on, but it was inevitable because it was the term before we had our exams. And then in the second term of second year, when we had our exams at the end of the term in week seven and week eight, it wasn't really 
busy in terms of contact hours but we were just everyone was busy just revising <laughs> we were just stressing out we had revision classes i think just because of the way oxford is kind of structured it's only eight week terms it's very very short you're only at oxford for half of the year and we have such long holidays we have six weeks of christmas six weeks for easter and then 16 weeks for the summer so it's very long which not only means that the actual term times are incredibly intense very very intense they've got to pack everything in in those eight weeks but it also means that you're expected to do more work in the holidays you're expected to kind of keep up at least a little bit of that momentum from term time in the holidays because they're so long and because they were so long if you are really self-motivated then you will do that work you will still do x number of hours per week i i was lazy i was very lazy and i never used the holidays to do any work apart from the week before term started when everyone does all their last minute work that they were meant to have done before so i would use the whole six weeks i'd use five of those weeks to go on holiday or chill or just not do anything university related. I did love that the terms were so short and I loved that we had so much time off and if we needed to get a job in the holidays then we had the time to and if we wanted to travel then we had more time to. I did love that and I wouldn't want the Oxford term lengths to be longer but I think that with the short terms there are the cons and for me I did struggle finding the motivation to actually do more work in the holidays because you are expected to do some kind of work it might not be a piece of work you have to hand in but you're kind of expected to do self-study and yeah i never really did that although we had mock exams called collections at the beginning of every term to test your knowledge on what you studied the previous term i for one never took them seriously and that is something that i do wish i had taken a bit more seriously because although everyone jokes about it and they are mock exams at the end of the day it doesn't really matter how you do as long as you're doing as well as you want to do in them if you choose to take them seriously and you work hard at them that's that's fine but also equally if you don't work hard at them and you don't really care about the grade you end up with in the mock exam that's also fine and i was kind of the latter and i didn't really care about the mock exams at all it was kind of a burden i just thought right i've just got to get them done and I don't care how I do and I wish I'd use them more for getting genuine feedback on essays and really practicing time management and doing the exam in the time frame and everything and I just never did because I was really lazy so that's something that is my own fault but also I think possibly a flaw of the Oxford short terms but I don't see them changing that anytime soon. Another thing I didn't like is that throughout the entire course for the four years the lecture series aren't necessarily put on in the same term that you are studying that paper. Different colleges will teach different papers at different times so for example with the first set of exams so the first five terms across those five terms some colleges will teach a different paper in each of those terms as long as they know they've covered all of the topics that you need to before the actual exams. I remember a time where some people were studying another paper and I was studying a different paper and I thought it was really weird and yet we were still all going to the same lectures because at the end of the day we were all still doing that same exam in first year. We studied the Aeneid in the second term of first year but I was going to the Aeneid lectures in the first term and the third term and it just it didn't really make sense it didn't add up to me it was kind of strange going to lectures sometimes going to lectures before you were even studying the paper i found that really weird because you obviously want to go to the lectures and you want to get your lecture notes but at the same time you don't know what you're writing notes for you don't know what you're looking for in the lecture you don't really know what you're writing about it's just not in line you'll go to a lecture you'll make your notes you'll get kind of like the reading list and the handout on there and if you were actually studying the paper in line with the lecture series and you had your reading list for a specific topic and then that term you'd also get a handout which was the same topic it could help you but i think if you're going to lectures after you've studied a topic or even before it's not really helpful at the time but overall in terms of the teaching for academics i loved it I, I absolutely loved it. I think that it pushed me so much academically. It was so challenging and it really pushed me to my academic limits and I learned and grew so much because of it. I did really like the way they taught. I liked the small teaching. I loved that it was two-on-one -on -one or one-on-one -on -one sessions with a professor who is world-renowned in their field. I, I loved it. It really pushes you to think outside of the box and I really liked that aspect of it. In my finals, for six of my papers, I literally had one-on-one -on -one tutorials for an hour every week for that paper. It was just me and the tutor and that's basically like private tuition. It's so, so personalised to you. I just really like the fact that it was just me in the room with the academic it's, it's terrifying at times you can't hide you have to have done the reading you have to have done the work they will grill you because you can't hide there's no one else there to jump in it was terrifying but 
I really liked it. Okay, moving on to the tutors, because there's a lot of questions about the tutors. As I said before, I, I loved that the tutors at Oxford, especially for classics, which has the biggest classics department in the world, subjects that you choose to study, there will be a tutor who is world renowned in that field, who will hopefully be teaching you for that paper. So I really loved that. The fact that your tutor's name is on the reading list just says something. Obviously the very intimate teaching means you get to know your tutors quite well. Lots of people have asked what the relationship with tutors is like and uh, how much guidance you get from them. And I would say you get a lot of guidance from tutors. It's scary at first but the majority of tutors are really nice and they're approachable and if you are stuck, especially in your first year, you don't really know what to do if you're stuck and you don't know where to start or you're having difficulties with a certain topic, if you just send your tutor an email, they are honestly more than happy to help you and guide you. You just have to email them and they will respond. They want you to do well. So for the most part, in my personal experience, tutors have been really, really helpful. There was one paper, the Roman Archaeology Cities and Settlement paper that I really wanted to do for finals, but I only decided to do it at the very end of my third year. Usually for, for finals, you typically do two papers at the same time, so two tutorials a week, two essays a week. And I really wanted to do this paper, I only decided to do it the second term of my third year. This course, it's taught in tutorials, but there's a huge emphasis on their lectures. They run two core lecture series only in the first term of every year. And I knew I'd be in Rome in the first term of my fourth year. I'd miss my chance to go to those lectures. I couldn't go to those core lectures. My tutor said that to me and she said, I'm gonna be a bit worried if you haven't gone to the core lectures. You know, they're a huge part of the course and you'll have missed them. Maybe you should email the course coordinator and ask his thoughts. So I emailed him and he was really, really enthusiastic. He really wanted me to still take the paper and he found a way for me to do it. He told me that all the slides and information and handouts would be available online. He found me a really good tutor who was available to teach me the course the next term. And I ended up doing it and that was one of my papers with the highest marks. It was one of my favorite papers and I loved it. Tutors can be really, really responsive, really enthusiastic. They love it if you're interested in what they're interested in. So in terms of that, tutors are really, they really help you out and they want you to do well and they are there for you. They're your first point of contact, especially your college tutors if anything goes wrong. You have a very personal relationship with them. You get to know them really, really well. Another question asks, were all your tutors nice? Um, if I'm being completely 100% honest, I think 90% of them were nice, but 10% of them weren't. I've said this in one of my other vlogs, but I had one tutor who really, really wasn't nice or sympathetic at all. When I found out that my grandma had passed away, I had to miss my mock exam for it. And previously I had had to reschedule the mock exam because I had had an assessment centre as well because I was applying for internships. This was a rescheduled mock exam and the rescheduled one had to be rescheduled again because I found out my grandma had passed away and I was going home and I, I literally physically wasn't in Oxford to take the exam. And he kind of implied that he didn't believe me that my grandma had passed away and it was just really not nice experience. So some of them aren't nice, some of them don't really understand you. I've heard of other people from other friends who've said that when they've been really struggling with their mental health, some tutors just don't understand and they're not understanding at all and still expect them to produce an essay despite the, the student telling them that they are un unable to. In my personal experience though, apart from that one tutor, all my tutors have been so, so understanding. If something's happened and I've been in Oxford because I've had to leave Oxford, suddenly they'll be very understanding. If I've needed help with anything, they usually try and help you in any way they can. So yeah, in my experience, tutors are really, really nice. And they're not just there to give you academic guidance, they're also there to be emotional support as well. When I was having a really tough time in my third year, I opened up to two of my tutors and they were really understanding, they gave me good advice and it just felt nice that I felt comfortable enough to talk to them about things and that they genuinely cared. Now on to workload. Honestly, I feel like this video is going to be very long. The workload is... Oh the biggest bane of my life at Oxford. I had a huge love-hate relationship with it because you love it because you are interested in the course and you love certain things that you end up reading about and studying for and writing your essays on. I remember there'd be times where I'd be reading things for a subject on a reading list for an essay and I'd be like, oh my god, this is so interesting. I absolutely love it so much. But then at the same time, you hate it because it is a lot. It is so intense. There is just so, so much work. Someone asked, did it ever inhibit you from having a social life? And absolutely, 100% yes. 
the workload at so many times meant that I couldn't go out. The workload was insane. Once you go up to two essays per week, like that is a lot of work on top of trying to maintain a social life, wanting to get involved with clubs and societies. It was really hard, but it is doable. It is a lot, so don't underestimate it. For me, after mods, so for my finals, I was writing at least two essays every single week which had to be typically at least 2,500 words. I had to allocate certain days to do reading, certain days to do writing. At the end of the day, you only have about three days for each, maybe even less if you have other commitments. So I would do two days of reading and half day writing, and that was it. And generally, that, that's not enough. <laughs> it wasn't enough. You've got to try and read as much as you can in that time, and sometimes articles will be 40 pages long. And for me, that takes me a good two, three hours for one article alone, you've got to read 10 articles or 10 books. So it is hard. You get really good at skim reading and picking out the really important pieces of information. On top of doing all of that, you've still got to go to lectures. You might have language stuff. You might have other commitments. So it is, it is really hard, especially if you do still want to maintain a social life and go out clubbing because that knocks out of you. All of it is it's hard. I won't lie to you and I, I did struggle many a time, but I also loved it. I kind of loved the fast pace of things. I didn't love it when I was having to pull an all-nighter because I hadn't done the work on time. Didn't love those, but at the end of the day, I think that kind of also is part of the university experience. Being so stressed about work that you have to stay up late and do the work really frantically, panicking and stressing out about it. I would say though that because it's so intense, I don't think it's necessarily the best way to actually learn things because I remember half of the time, or more than half of the time, I'd be there reading and writing for an essay, but it wouldn't properly go in. It wouldn't properly go in because all you're doing is you're trying to meet the deadline, you're trying to write this essay and hand it in, and then you never really look at it again properly until it comes to a revision. So I was bashing out an essay, writing my notes, writing the essay, getting it in, but not really properly taking it in. That's one thing that I would say I didn't like about it. You write the essay really fast, but what you're supposed to do then is in the holidays, go back over all the work you did in the term time, read extra things you didn't have time to read during the term from the reading list, add to your notes, improve your essay, create your revision cards and stuff and I never did any of that at all. It's my own fault, it's my own experience, but I think a lot of people are like that. I think it's quite typical and it just, the workload, yeah, it piles up. There is a lot and if you don't stay on top of it, it can really bite you in the bum and it definitely bit me in the bum for a couple of papers when I was revising for my finals. I think I would have preferred possibly having a handful of essays every term, maybe four essays every term where you have two weeks to properly focus on the essay. I think I'd have much preferred that or even eight essays where you're doing, you have a whole week on one essay rather than literally two and a half, three days on an essay because that would make a huge difference to your enjoyment of the paper, your understanding of the paper and it would just improve your essay. So I think that's not great. I also think that the quality of your teaching depends on your tutors and that can also be affected by your college because your college might not have in-house tutors so you'll be sent to another college and generally speaking it's better to have college tutors who can teach you the papers you want to do because typically you will have a closer and a better relationship with tutors who are in your own college who are kind of more committed to you as a student rather than another random tutor from another college who won't really care about you as much as they care about their own college students. I'd say that's something to consider. Another thing I'd say is that the workload really inhibits you from having any kind of part-time job, which I know a lot of university students need and want. Oxford also have, has a rule where you're not allowed to have a part-time job when you're at university, which isn't very access friendly, but I can also understand why, because I cannot fathom having a part-time job whilst at Oxford. I just, I can't. You physically just don't have the time to do it. So I can understand why they have that rule. And also I think their reasoning is that because our holidays are so long, if you need that money, then you can work in the longer holidays. And also if you need the money, they have a, an Oxford bursary available to every single student and it's dependent on your household income. So that's a completely free bursary that you won't have to pay back. You might be entitled to that as well. I would say though that on the job front, there are certain exceptions. So if your college has a college bar, you might be allowed to work in the college bar and earn some money like that. I know Rosie did. And also if you want to become an ambassador and do some access work for your college, that's generally a paid role. Is it more stressful than other unis? I can't comment on that because I've not been to another uni and I've not been a student at another uni. So I have no idea what the workload is like at other universities. But from my personal experience talking to other friends 
from other universities or having my own friends come and visit me in Oxford they've just said it seems like the workload is in insane but obviously it's all subjective as well it depends on the person it's all relative because someone at another university to them their workload from their university might be very very stressful so it, it entirely depends on the person and on the course you're studying another question adapting to work after taking a gap year yeah this was very difficult for me very very tough i'd had a whole year out of education i'd done a bit of kind of academic work to like kind of keep my brain in that kind of mindset because I studied Mandarin intensively for two months in my gap year so didn't just do nothing like I did use my brain in my gap year but it was still a big shock <laughs> it was a really big shock coming back after my gap year to just be thrown straight in the deep end I think as well if I'm honest taking the gap year I wouldn't I don't regret it at all but taking the gap year meant that I wasn't in the school motivational mindset that lots of students who come straight from school are in because if you when you're just on your a-levels you're still kind of in that mindset of studying and having a routine and doing lots of work outside of school and I just wasn't in that mindset at all. I came to uni and I hadn't done work for over a year and it definitely does make a difference but I wouldn't say don't take a gap year because of it because it's fine in the end but I did struggle a lot. I did struggle a lot. Someone asked less work over weekends or holidays. Absolutely not true. Generally there's not really a weekend at Oxford. People generally work on the weekend and what I found from personal experience is that my friends at other universities found it surprising that Oxford students don't tend to go out on the weekend. We don't tend to go out on Fridays or Saturdays unless there's a specific event on at one of the other clubs in Cowley. People generally use the weekend for their university work. And there's like no weekend, you, it's just like non-stop work to be honest. And if the holidays, as I said before, you're expected to do work and you probably should do at least a little bit of work but people don't so you could argue there is less work because it's down to you on the flip side of that you kind of should be doing some work it would be less intensive than an Oxford term times work but you should still be doing a couple of hours a day or a handful of hours per week but I, I didn't <laughs> is there pressure from work is it a toxic culture I would say that I did find it to be toxic sometimes especially at my college so my college is very academic very very academic out of the 38 odd colleges in Oxford, we are consistently between first, second and third, our academic rankings. So we're a very, very academically strong college. I definitely felt that. And compared with other colleges, I think there was a difference. I, I did feel the difference where I think the students who were at my college were more inclined to be more academic, given our statistics, like statistically, than other students from other colleges. Like when I went to other colleges, I would find people who were like kind of like me more laid back and relaxed about work at least from personal experience so I did I did feel the pressure in my college particularly my college for classics is also very very strong most people get a first for classics at my college so I definitely felt that and our tutors do push you really hard they're they're brilliant they're absolutely amazing but they do push you really hard they do give you a lot more work than possibly other colleges might do because we have extra language classes that other colleges don't do it was quite a pressurized environment yeah I, I felt that it could be quite toxic at times when people were competing with each other or people were constantly doing work or people were being secretive about things but I think because I was more like <laughs> laid back about things I didn't really associate myself with that and then the final thing about the course gosh this has gone on for so long final thing about the course that I really liked was the flexibility of the course the fact that you could do so many different options I could have taken up ancient Greek in my third year if I wanted to learn the second classical language I chose not to and I don't think I've ever said this anywhere online but actually after I took mods in the second term of my second year. I didn't want to do classics anymore. I wanted to swap courses and I was really seriously considering it. I was talking to other people about it, talking to people on the course that I wanted to switch to. I wanted to switch to the philosophy, psychology and linguistics degree program at Oxford, which is called PPL for short. I really wanted to do that after after mods. I really like the philosophy. I really, really wanted to do psychology. And I mean, linguistics was kind of like optional. So I really wanted to do PPL, but I spoke to someone else who was in, I think two years above me in my college. And he said he had had the same thoughts after mods, but he didn't swap. After I spoke more to other people and I looked more at the actual papers on offer for classics at finals, it was just so broad and there was so much flexibility that I decided not to go ahead with swapping my course. I'd found that in the classics course, you can, cause you can do so many modern philosophy papers. There was a paper called philosophy of cognitive science, which I thought would be a compromise. I could do that paper and it kind of overlaps with neuroscience -y psychology stuff. And I planned on doing it and I wanted to do it in the summer term of my third year. And this is the reason why I ended up switching to do the archeology span paper that I spoke about. 
well that I decided to do last minute. It was a paper that was only taught in eight weeks, so one term, it would take one term of teaching, lectures in, in, in other terms. And one of my tutors was quite harsh with me and essentially said that they didn't think I was good enough to do the paper and that it was not possible for me to do the paper and that I don't have a science and maths background so I probably wouldn't be suited to the paper and that they only recommend people do papers that the tutors think you're going to get at least a 2-1 in. That kind of really upset me because I did have a maths and science background, I, I do have a maths and science background for A-level and I do think I could have done well in the paper. Kind of, kind of like a mini argument slash we kind of had a thing where I was just really upset and angry that I wasn't being allowed to do it. But it all worked out in the end, we're on good terms and it was fine. I loved the paper that I did end up doing but that was like a little thing where I really wanted to do that paper but I wasn't allowed to do it. Generally speaking though you are allowed to do papers that you want to do and there's just so much flexibility in the classics course. There's like a advanced philosophical logic, there's the like philosophy of math, philosophy of physics, there's so many different types of papers that you wouldn't expect in the classics course but if you look online before you apply you'll be able to see that there's just so much. The course is just so broad, it's not just a languages degree, it's not just a literature degree, it's history, philosophy, literature, language, archaeology, philology, just so so much. And we will get on to social life, freshers week, making friends, club societies, nightlife, all of that in the next video in part two. So stay tuned because it's coming to you very soon. Thank you so much for watching the first part and hopefully see you in the second. Bye.